Greetings everybody. So today I have something that is very, very special. Actually two things that are very special. Two extremely rare capsicum species. So in a recent episode, I took a look at the commonly cultivated capsicums. Uh, that includes capsicum anum, chinense, baccatum, fruticins, and pubescens. So although only five of them are commonly cultivated, there are actually over 20 different species of capsicum. They're just ones that you're not going to find at any markets, at least not usually. And today I have two of those. Capsicum flexuosum and capsicum rhombodium. Before I try these, I want to give a shout out to Matt over at mattspeppers.com. He sent these to me, so thank you so much, Matt. Uh, anytime I can try a different species of something is really exciting to me, so getting to try a different species of something that, you know, I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of different peppers, that is, like, really cool to me. I'm curious to see how these compare to some of the species that I've had in the past. So first, let's try the Capsicum flexuosum. So this one, I believe, grows the most in southern Brazil. And in southern Brazil, sometimes people pick it in the wild and use it as a spice, but it is not something that is typically cultivated. Capsicum flexuosum and also Capsicum rhombodium are teeny tiny. They're small, round, little fruits. So because they're so small, I'm actually going to try three of them at once. Oh, it has heat! Especially considering how small those are, I'd say that's around the heat of a jalapeno. Maybe a little bit more. The flavor of that is, um... Well, that heat's building. It's hot! <laughs> it's hot. It's, it's kind of like throat-burning kind of heat. When you eat a chili pepper, sometimes it hits you in the tongue, sometimes the lips, sometimes the nose. This one is, like, getting me, like, right here. Which is a little bit like how the capsicum chinense is, like a habanero pepper kind of does that. It gets you in the throat. And the flavor of that is, it's good. It's not um, super strong, but it has a little bit of a fruity flavor, kind of like maybe a little bit peachy, a little apricot-y, which some other chili peppers have. I say this one is a little bit like ricotto, pepper, which is capsicum pubescens. What I like best about this is the size of it. Because they're so small, you could take these peppers and just sprinkle them whole on top of something that you want to add a little kick to, and also a little bit of like a, a fruity pepper flavor. It's good! I'm surprised that this one is not more common. Next, I'm going to try capsicum rambodium, and this one is native to Mexico, Central America, and South America. I wasn't able to find any reference to anybody actually eating this one, but um, it, it is edible as far as I can tell. So let's give it a try. Oh, weird. Pomegranate. There's zero heat to that. No heat at all. Um, and honestly, there's not a strong flavor to it, but the flavor that's there tastes like pomegranate. The texture on this is nice. I mean, with both of them, it's about the same. There's just like a small pop when you bite into it. I think it's something that could be utilized. I think both of these could be utilized, but as something that you're going to sprinkle on top of a dish. If you want to add a little kick to something, use the capsicum flexiosum, put that on top of something. If you want something to just have a little bit of a pop and a little bit of a fruit taste, then um, the rhombodium would be good for that. And I can see maybe using this in a similar way that, like, caviar is used. If you're going to have, like, a bellini and put this on it instead of, you know, regular caviar, it would give you that kind of pop, and it would give you a little kick of flavor, but, you know, be something else. Or, like, how people use uh, finger limes now. People use finger limes to add a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a texture, and a little bit of a flavor to something that they're eating. So, cool. These are cool, and um, I don't think there's much else for me to say about these, so I want to give another shout out to mattspeppers.com uh, for sending these to me. Thank you, Matt. And I do have one other 
capsicum species that I have not reviewed on this channel before. I didn't want to squeeze that into this episode, so we're going to save that for another one. But uh, until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a big shout out to Lofty Rex and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is basically how I can afford to go on all the adventures I do on this channel. So if you enjoy my series and you want to help support me, check out the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, I also have t-shirts for sale like this one here, the Durian Anatomy shirt. That is available on my website, which I also put in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.